Rebecca. I'm Joel. I'm Dallas. And this is Bridgewood Kids. Welcome Bridgewood kids to another amazing experience we have just for you. We've got so much packed into this experience, don't we team? Oh, yeah. yes. Can you fill the kids in on what they can expect today? Yes, we are going to have worship. We are going to have some super exciting, a little bit competitive games. And we're super excited for our interactive lesson today. Yes, as you can hear, so much stuff, and we're gonna throw a little bit more on top of that, like trivia time and some other fun things that kids love to do. But before we get there, we gotta do a couple of other important things, like we need to buckle up. Are you ready, kids? Can you buckle up with our team? Let's bring those seat belts over and click. And then this is one of my favorite things to do mm -hmm. as we kick Thank off you. Bridgeway Kids. We wanna hear you make your loudest noise, oh, your yeah. loudest mm -hmm. cheer. Are you ready? We're gonna count them down on three, and when we get to three, we wanna hear you scream as loud as you can. Are you ready? We're ready. ready. One, two, two, three. Wow, I think they're ready, you guys. They're they pretty are good. ready. Goodness. Yes, they are. All right, kids, let's make it happen. Hey, kids, what's happening? You see where I'm at right now? Come on. I know you like to eat just like me, and you usually eat at a table like this. Today in our lesson, we're gonna talk about this parable that has to do about the great banquet that God is preparing for you and for me. And you know, if you're gonna have a banquet at your house or you're gonna go somewhere that's got a big banquet, they have to like give you a place setting. So today, we're playing the place setting game. Here's how it works. Everyone's gonna have a different color. You're gonna be on a team and you're gonna take your bag of place setting items. You're gonna pull out the place mat. You're gonna place it right there. Man, can I say the word place one more time? Like that's a lot of places. And then you have a card like this in your bag. It's got all the different items you need to set your place setting. And then you have a dice and a dice. Okay, I'll get it right. You roll this dice, right? Boom. And you have to roll a six in order to start setting your play setting. So, I got a two. Let me keep rolling. I can't start until I get a six. Oh, there we go, I got a six. Six is what? Napkin. So I take my napkin, I place it right there. Then the next person rolls. And the next person would roll eight. They got a one, that's for your plate. So you take your plate, you put it right there. If the next person rolls a one like that, guess what? They have to roll again until they, oh, it's another one. Until they get, it's a two. Until they get another item for the play setting. First team to get everything laid out on this play setting is the winning team. Sound good? We're getting ready to do it mano y mano or mano y womano because we have two ladies, two men against each other on our next gen team. Let's make it happen.
fear is calming Still you're calling me My faith is lost and my hope exhausted You will be my strength When my mind says I'm not good enough God, you're enough for me I've decided I'm not giving up Cause you won't give up on me You won't give up on me Your love is holding on and it won't let go Let's see what it is. Wow, look, it's an invitation to Stella's birthday party. Wow. They're gonna have bounce houses and cotton candy. They're gonna have a clown. I love clowns. That is awesome. That's did, so did, fun. Did you did you get invited? Oh, um, I don't think so. Well, this is gonna be the biggest party of the mm. whole year. Man, I'm so excited that I got invited. Oh. But you know, I do have to go to the dentist and I think I need to clean my car out and you know, I haven't really been paying much attention to my pet goldfish lately. So, you know, I don't know, maybe I maybe I won't go. <laughs> Why, Jen? You just got invited to the coolest party ever. You should definitely go. Yeah, I don't know. You know what, Jen? This reminds me of a part in the Bible where Jesus told a story about a very special invitation. Mm. Do you guys want to hear about it? You know what? I actually know that story too, Miranda, and I would love to help you share it with them. This is another one of Jesus' special stories that we've been learning about the last few weeks. Remember, they are called parables. One day, Jesus was invited to dinner in the home of an important religious leader. The host and many of the guests who were there were Pharisees. Jesus told these men that when they are having a party, that they should not invite their friends, family, or neighbors. Because if they do, they will in turn be invited to their parties, 
and that will be their reward. Instead, invite the poor, crippled, lame, and blind, for they are unable to repay you. A man at the table heard this and said to Jesus how blessed he would be to eat at a feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus responded with a story. A master was preparing a great party. He picked a theme, decided on the food, even prepared the invitations. When he was ready, he sent his servant out to hand out the invitations for the party. The servant reached the first guest. He excitedly gives him the invitation to the party. The first man refuses the invitation, saying that he has just bought a field and he must attend to it. Feeling a little discouraged, the servant then reaches the next guest with his invitation. He too refuses the invitation. He has just purchased five oxen and says that he would like to go out and try them out. Next, the servant goes to yet another guest. This guest too refuses. He states that he has just gotten married, so he is unable to attend. Brokenhearted, the servant comes back to his master and tells him of all of the excuses that the guests made for not being able to attend. The master becomes very angry. He tells his servant to go into the streets and to invite anyone that he can find, to invite the crippled, the blind, and the lame. So the servant did as the master had requested. He went into the streets and gathered all the people he could find, the bad as well as the good. When he was finished, the banquet hall was filled with guests. So you're probably wondering, what was Jesus trying to teach in this story? In this story, the master or the host of the banquet represents God and the banquet represents heaven. God invited his people, the Jewish people, to accept his invitation to heaven, but many of them did not accept God's invitation. When Jesus came, many Jewish people rejected him. By rejecting Jesus, they were rejecting the celebration that God has prepared for us in his kingdom. They were like the three people who made the excuses to miss the banquet. But God is so good. His invitation is for all people. In the parable, the servant searched everywhere, far and wide, to invite and to bring people to the banquet. God's invitation is for the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. God's invitation is also for the popular, the rich, and the famous. It's for those we think are important and for those we think are least important. It is for everyone, including you and me. But what do you guys have to do in order to attend? You must accept it. Accepting salvation through Jesus is how you and I are able to attend God's banquet in heaven. Trust me, you guys, this is one celebration that you are not going to want to miss out on. Jesus is our salvation. By dying on the cross and rising again, Jesus made a way for all of us to be set free from our sins. We're all unworthy to eat at God's table, but Jesus' sacrifice on the cross paid the price for our ticket to be at the banquet. Jesus is salvation. Let's pray and thank him now for his invitation. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for these students. I pray that as they are learning your word, that they would understand that your invitation for them to be in heaven and to be at the table is free for them. I pray that we would all accept that and that you would just give us a good week. And we thank you, Lord, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Hey kids, we're back with this awesome segment that we love to review our lessons yes. with. And what are we doing again, Jen? It's a, a parable. 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 A story with a biblical truth. Yes, and because it has a biblical truth, we must review it. We must. We must ask questions about it because it's important for you. And we call this segment Trivia, Trivia Time. Time. Question number one, what did the guests have to do to be invited to the banquet? And question two, why did the host become angry? Question number three, in what ways did the people reject the invitation? And question number four, how do we receive God's invitation? Most important question mm. we've ever done in trivia of all time. Yeah, yeah, it's a real important one. And God's invitation, does it come in the mail, Jen? And it looks really cute. Does it have like a photo on it? Kind of like those senior graduation invitations? I don't Or like so. a birthday party invitation? Or like a wedding invitation? No, it doesn't. No. It's different. No, and it's for everyone. Oh, wow. So it's not just a select few that yeah, get this it's invite. a good invitation. Woo! This is going to be good, kids. Yep. You're going to love this invitation. I cannot wait for you to discover this if you haven't already. Well, on that note, before we call it quits, with another amazing Bridgewood Kids experience, we have one, one more thing. thing. Bam. Okay, kids, before we wrap up this Bridgewood Kids experience, we got to let you in on our vision statement. Are you ready, team? Ready. ready. We want to be kids so close to Christ that everyone, everyone in the world, world will know him. him. All right, we'll see you next time. See Goodbye. Ya.